Welcome, welcome to the best five minute wine podcast. I'm your host, Forrest Kelly. From the seed to the glass, wine has a past. Our aim at the best five minute wine podcast is to look for adventure at wineries around the globe. After all, great minds think alike. Let's start the adventure. Our featured winery is. We continue our conversation with Vint co founder Nick. Is there an easy way to give an elevator pitch for what Vint is all about? Yeah, uh, I will say, unfortunately, there's probably not a glamorous way to put it. I say Vint curates the finest wines and spirits in the world. We spent eight months to file paperwork with the SEC so that you can transparently, efficiently, and um, through a trusted platform, invest in wine and spirits. Unfortunately, I think that's probably as glamorous as I can make it. Well, that's completely understandable. That That is glamorous in its simplicity. Now, Billy, your title being head of wine at Vint, can you explain about your job a little bit? Yeah, so I like, Nick always provides a nice, concise overview of the whole process, but the actual theme generation and um, I guess synthesis or the beginning of the process starts with me. Um, I'm keeping, you know, kind of tabs on the, the wine market as it's moving trends that are happening kind of globally in terms of collect your interest, auction happenings, um, and, and marketplace trends. And then I put together this basket, which we then present to our investment committee. So I'm kind of in at the beginning. I go back and forth with them, kind of get their feedback, see where we're going, um, and then kind of basically just monitor it, the process throughout the way. So I get their feedback. We tweak a little bit. We send to our, our merchants. They say we have these specific wines from these specific vintages. We go back and forth on what we would think would be most um, put together the strongest collection for our investors. And then once that happens, I'll work with them to to finalize the purchase. And and with Nick, we organize where the, the wines will be kept. Um, most of them are kept in the UK. I would say 80% of our wines at the time. Or if they're going to be in the US, we have two different um, storage facilities here as well. So we just work out those details. And then, um, yeah, and then it's off to creating the collection materials, whether it be the thesis that we include with every collection or the, the other materials that are on the website itself. How does a winery or a wine get on your radar? How do they get noticed by Vint? So we take a, a multi-step approach to source our wines. Billy, our head of wine, is collaborating with our wine investment committee. We have two of the 50 or so masters of wine here in the U.S., a fund manager and an importer on that investment committee. And they're doing what I call the fundamental analysis. They're looking at the market, looking at themes, looking at different regions, vintages to find out what could be interesting from there, we're looking at market pricing data, and we go to a number of different suppliers all across the world, UK, US, and we'll say, here are the wines that we want to curate into a collection. From there, we iterate on the underlying bottles to form what we find to be interesting collections. So we've had everything from DRC, Domaine de la Romani Conti, which most famous expensive bottle out there um we've done whiskey we've done bordeaux futures and yeah once we curate the assets we file the paperwork and then you can go onto the platform and buy as little as one share or hundreds of shares can you expand on that uh, a bit billy in that uh, there was multiple ways several ways of sourcing there's two routes i guess we go i think the, the main route that a lot of our collections are, are basically tried and true to some historically well-known wines um, a lot of these are these are blue chip so many of the what's considered investable at the moment will be these well-known brands when it comes to something we explore in the future whether it be working with local producers to do futures or to feature their wine and direct to consumer packs those are either connections we've made just in the industry, just working in the industry, um, potentially from our wine investment committee, or just me, for example, going around and, and tasting and looking for, for interesting wine stories. So that there are a bunch of opportunities, a bunch of new and upcoming producers that we're always trying to keep our eye out for to, to work with and continue to push the wine industry forward. But at the same time, a large majority of our, our current collections are made up of the kind of the tried and true well-known names from Europe and America. Right. You guys have consciously uh, gone towards or that's just what the markets, what the investors type, that's what they feel secure in. Yeah, I would say it's the latter. Um, our, our goal, first and foremost, is to provide a, 
a quality investment for our our platform members and our investors. So in order to do so, we, we kind of turned to the the wines and the producers that have had the best historical track record and historically provided created wines that have provided returns in the past. So with that lens, we're trying to put our best foot forward with our investors and then we'll continually try to see who's coming onto the scene to provide the opportunities in the future. Thank you for listening. I'm Forrest Kelly. This episode of the Best 5-Minute Wine Podcast was produced by iHism. If you like the show, please tell your friends and pets and subscribe. Until next time, pour the wine and ponder your next adventure.